Hey guys, welcome to Bed with Made Simple. This video is about cholesteatoma. If you're new to my channel, I'd highly recommend you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you can keep watching all my upcoming medical videos for free. Okay, so cholesteatoma is nothing but skin in wrong place. Okay, so let me explain why. Uh, let, let, let me explain this statement in detail. Okay, but, so before that, I'd like to uh, explain about the epithelial lining in various parts of the middle ear. Okay, so that will help you relate uh, So the epithelial lining in the antero inferior part of the middle ear cleft. Okay, so that is ciliated columnar epithelium I've explained more about the epithelial lining in my previous video on chronic subradio auditus media so the middle part of the middle uh, middle ear cleft is lined by cuboidal epithelium and the attic or the roof part is lined by squamous epithelium so nowhere in the middle ear we have keratinizing squamous epithelium right but in case of cholesteatoma we have keratinizing squamous epithelium in the middle ear so that is what happens in cholesteatoma so cholesteatoma is seen in articoantral type of chronic separative otitis media which is called unsafe variety of chronic separative otitis media so i already made a video on chronic separative arthritis media the types and all that so I, i'll uh, put the link of that video in the comment section and the cards okay so you can watch that after watching this video so there are the important things uh, which may be asked in your exams uh, are the theories uh, which explain the origin of cholesteatoma so there are five important theories the congenit uh, theory which says that uh, cholesteatoma arises from congenital cell rests uh, and we have it Mac theory, UD theory, Habermann theory, and Said theory. First of all, congenital cell rests, as the name suggests, uh, this theory suggests that there will be congenital cell rests uh, which are present in the middle ear and they'll get active and they'll form cholesteatoma. Okay, so this theory explains the congenital cholesteatoma variety. And second, we have Wittmach theory. Okay, so the Wittmach theory says that uh, there will be formation of retraction pockets and this will be most common in the attic region. Okay, so there'll be formation of retraction pockets. Uh, so I've explained about retraction pockets in my previous video, but I'll give an overview of retraction pockets here also. So what happens here, this is a normal representation of the tympanic membrane to which the malleus is, malleus is attached. So what happens is that there'll be formation of retraction pockets like these. Okay, that is most common in the attic region. And once these retraction pockets um, form and they're present for a long time, they'll start to deposit the keratinizing uh, stratified squamous epithelium in that region and that is what Wittmax theory is trying to explain okay so retraction pockets will be forming um, most commonly in the parts uh, flaccida that is in the attic region and followed by which there will be deposition of uh, keratinizing squamous epithelium okay that is Wittmax theory so then we have Rudy theory so Rudy theory is nothing but uh, uh, Cholesteatoma arises from basal cell hyperplasia because of repeated infections, but uh, there's a way to uh, there's a way uh, which I used to remember Rudy theory for uh, basal cell hyperplasia. Okay, so uh, it's I remember Rudy to be uh, rude. Okay, so it's kind of rude, and um, so it's uh, causing infection and it's causing uh, basal cell hyperplasia and cholesteatoma. Okay, so that's how I remember Rudy theory. Okay. So Rudy theory, uh, so it's rude and it causes infection and that's why uh, because of the infection we have a response which is basal cell hyperplasia and cholesteatoma forms. That is about Rudy theory and then we have Haberman theory in, in, uh, which states that there's a in a, in a case of a pre-existing perforation in the tympanic, uh, tympanic membrane the epithelium from the external auditory canal or the outer lining of the tympanic membrane will invade the hole that is the perforation and forms cholesteatoma okay that is about uh, Haberman theory there's a way to remember uh, Haberman theory Haberman starts with H and uh, the perforation uh, which is present in the tympanic membrane is uh, actually a hole which also starts with H okay so H H in Haberman theory, we have a hole in the tympanic membrane through which the epithelium lining the outer external auditory canal and the outer lining of the tympanic membrane invades and forms cholesteatoma. Okay, and this is commonly seen in marginal uh, variety of perforation in the tympanic membrane. Okay, so if you want to know about types of perforation, I've explained uh, it in uh, much detail in my previous video. Okay, so don't forget to watch it after watching this video. Finally, we have Said theory. Okay, 
So this theory uh, states that because of repeated infections, the epithelium undergoes metaplasia and so uh, it forms keratinizing squamous epithelium. So like in any other part of the body, repeated infections or repeated uh, uh, injury or repeated insult to a particular site will, uh, will cause metaplasia, right? So that is what is happening here also, uh, according to this theory, okay? So a way to remember said theory for metaplasia is that Metaplasia is kind of sad, kind of sad thing to happen, right? So, said theory, uh, so you can remember sad for said theory and that is associated with uh, metaplasia, okay? So, that leads to formation of cholesteatoma. So, I've tried to give an idea about the theories of cholesteatoma, okay? I, I hope you understood about the theories. Yeah. Now, let's see about the types of cholesteatoma. Okay, so the cholesteatoma can be broadly classified as congenital and acquired varieties. The congenital varieties, as the name suggests, is because of presence of congenital cell rests, which can later get activated to form cholesteatoma. Okay, so that is congenital cholesteatoma, and acquired cholesteatomas are those which are acquired after birth. So these are further classified into primary and secondary cholesteatomas. So primary cholesteatoma is the one in which there is no pre-existing perforation or no pre-existing ear discharge and the cholesteatoma forms into in situ in that place okay so without any pre-existing perforation or ear discharge or anything okay so that is primary acquired cholesteatoma so some of, some of the theories to explain this is the theory which explains the formation of retraction pockets you know you remember what the theory which explains retraction um, which explains cholesteatoma based on formation of retraction pockets yeah that is with max theory and we have uh, secondary uh, acquired cholesteatoma uh, in which there is already pre-existing perforation and we have um, or there can be pre-existing discharge and secondary to that uh, secondary to some other factor if cholesteatoma is forming it is known as secondary acquired cholesteatoma so examples of uh, the theories which explain secondary acquired cholesteatomas uh, are Haberman theory and all that okay as you remember Haberman theory is the one which says um, because of a pre-existing hole which is perforation in the tympanic membrane the epithelium in the external artery canal or the outer lining of the tympanic membrane invades into the uh, invades through the perforation and causes cholesteatoma okay so i hope you remember the theories which i've explained so this is about the classification of cholesteatoma so how does cholesteatoma cause much of the complications as you all know uh, the main cause of complications in articoantral type of uh, chronic separated auditis media is the presence of cholesteatoma. It, it uh, actually follows the path of least resistance, okay? So it can invade the nearby structures like the bones, uh, bones and all that, okay? So it can invade the nearby structures and it follows the path of least resistance and it causes enzymatic bone destruction, okay? So the enzymes are, uh, the enzymes which cause bone destruction are released from osteoclasts, which are bone destroying cells and certain mononuclear inflammatory cells okay so when i when i talked about um, the clinical features of articoantral disease in my previous video i told that artic articoantral disease is associated with foul smelling serious uh, scanty discharge right that's because uh, the discharge is foul smelling because uh, because of bone destruction okay the enzymatic bone destruction causes necrosis and it it produces the foul smelling associated with the discharge okay so that's the reason for foul smelling discharge in articoantral disease and the enzymes which are produced are collagenase acid phosphatase and certain proteolytic enzymes which are capable of breaking down bones so investigations uh, which are to be performed first of all we perform clinical examination and proper history taking followed by that we can uh, perform microscopy to examine the external artery canal and the tympanic membrane and the cholesteatoma and we should perform audiogram uh, to identify the type of hearing loss which is present in the patient so that we can tell the patient accordingly that if uh, surgeries are really beneficial or the line of management can be explained to the patient and uh, we should take x-rays of mastoids to see if the mastoids are also involved and a CT scan of temporal bone is compared comparatively superior to x-ray mastoids in uh, checking out the bone destruction and now we have two types of procedures to deal with cholesteatomas. We have canal wall down procedures and canal wall up procedures. Okay, so I'll tell the differentiating points. It'll be nice if you guys uh, can 
note it down uh, as and when I explain so it will be easy for you to understand it's actually very simple first let me talk about canal wall down procedures so I'll be telling various points and in canal wall up procedures I'll just tell the points uh, which are opposite to this so that you can compare and study both and you can easily retain them so first in canal wall down procedures wall uh, will ha will have the mastoid cavity uh, open into the external auditory canal so you have to remember all uh, you need not remember anything else except this if you remember this you can remember everything else which i'm going to tell um, tell now okay so here the mastoid cavity will be open into the external auditory canal in canal wall down procedure so what by doing so we'll be able to exteriorize the diseased area fully so we can uh, make sure that no disease is left behind okay and we can clean the disease process uh, properly so there are less chances of recurrence or uh, disease to be retained within the uh, middle ear or the mastoids because we are cleaning it completely so since we are doing it properly since the entire uh, diseased uh, area is exposed and uh, cleaned properly uh, second look surgeries are usually not required in canal wall down procedures so the the disadvantages are that the mastoid cavity has to be cleaned once or twice a year and there'll be problems in fitting here aid because uh, the external auditory canal will be uh, uh, will be made a bit larger because of this procedure so it will be difficult to fit um, hearing aids so now let's co compare the points which I've explained in canal wall down procedures with that of canal wall up procedures. Okay, so here the mastoid cavity will not be open into the external artery canal, so the disease area is not fully exteriorized. Okay, so compare this with canal wall down procedures. So since the disease area is not fully exteriorized, there are more chances of recurrence and some residual disease to be left behind. So those are some of the disadvantages, and so. Second look surgeries are usually required because we are not sure if the disease is completely taken out and if some disease uh, so it may recur also. So that's why second look, surgery, second look surgeries are usually required and it is usually done in about six months following the first surgery. Advantages are that the mastoid cavity does not require routine cleaning and there will be no problems in fitting the hearing aid. So both have both has got their own pros and cons. So it will be easy if you can. If you note down the points in the same way I've mentioned in this video, so it'd be very easy for you to uh, understand differences between canal wall down and canal wall up procedures. Okay. So we came to the end of this video. If you like this video, you can support my channel by donating on www.patreon.com slash made simple. The link is in the description of this video. Um, so uh, I, I, I told in my previous video that I'll be making videos on the following topics. I made one, so my next video will mostly be on complications of CSOF. There are certain Amazon affiliate links which I mentioned in the description of this video. So if you guys click that link and buy anything in Amazon, uh, I'll get a part of it as commission. So it will be indirectly helping my channel. And also don't forget to check out our Merge which Made Simple Merch. The link is in the description. So these are actually available in various colors. So you can check it out if you're interested. So don't forget to like this video and share this video to your friends and comment your suggestions below in the comment section and follow me on social media like Instagram and Facebook and check out my blog okay most importantly don't forget to subscribe to Medwish Made Simple thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys in my next video